Hi everyone and welcome to my place. For ages now I have been wanting to share how to make a brooch or a jeweled bouquet and I have a few that I have made here and I absolutely love and adore this idea of making a bouquet that you've got a keepsake that you can go from generation to generation or you just want to keep a bit of specialness from your special day. It's also a really great way of gathering around all the family bits of jewels. You might have a great aunt that's given you something or you don't know. There's lots and lots of jewels that I've discovered in our family that have all been put into boxes and I just felt that it was a wonderful way of bringing them and giving them a good earring and making them for something that would be very, very nice on your day. They're very, very easy to make and let me just show you uh, run through now all of the things that you need. So first and foremost, because it's a jeweled or a brooch bouquet, you need a whole heap of little bling bling, lovely little bits that you want to put into your bouquet and either the colors or you might want to just have an assemblage of all different types of brooch or, or little bling blings that you've got. You also need some wine. Now I'm using, it's about, this gauge here is about a 20, two gauge um, stainless steel wire and the reason I'm using the stainless steel is I didn't want to put all the effort into making the bouquet to have the whole thing just rust out in time. You also need, let me just get rid of that because we don't need the, that at the moment, you also need some mesh either gold or silver or you can get this in pearl and it comes in about that length which it, width which is about four inches, five inches and it comes in huge big rolls so you've got enough here to make lots and lots of bouquets and the the reason I chose that is because I've always ad loved and admired Oriton, so I just thought, well, Oriton jewels sparkle would be a really lovely base for what we're going to make, what we're going to be doing today. You also need a hand drill. This is optional, and I'll show you how that works and why I use it in due course. You also need some glue sticks and your glue gun. I've got some wire cutters here. I've also got a tape measure which you'll need, and I've got these little things here. Now these are posy holders or posy, I think they call them posy um, collars. Now they're just a big sort of like wiry thing that opens up and you can move, move it into all shapes that you want, which I'll get to in a moment. So it comes in gold and it comes in silver and I think it's part of the Oasis brand and they, these are going to be turned into these in due course. Now if you can't find the collars, the metal collars, you can use the Oasis lady holders to make your bouquet but I'll show you why I don't like to use that in due course. Plus you will also need something to put your bouquet into to form a handle. Now these here are just, was just a cheap inexpensive serving spoon and what I did was I just took the spoon out and then took that little cap out there and then removed the bit that's in the inside but I'll show you that as well. Plus you need some jewels or something to dangle if you want your bouquet to have extra dangling bits at the end and I've also got this little embellishing beautiful I just love this it's just like the most delicious little wee um, diamante um, ribbon which or brooch that looks like a little ribbon that I think will be quite nice to embellish the handle which will share in due course. Right leave me to just strike all of this and I'll be back to show you how to begin the bouquets. Right, the first thing that we need to do is to form our base, which we, is what the base is going to look like. And when you look at that, it's no greater, it's about the same size as the Oasis Lady Holder. So that's a good starting base to start with. Now to achieve this, in fact I don't like these and you'll see why very soon. To achieve this, it's just a matter of getting your po your collar, your metal collar here. And when you look into it, it's got this little wee bit here where everything is all being bound together. And it's just a matter of getting into here. And this is the fiddly, fiddly, fiddly bit because you've got to pull all of these bits out to start to form it into. Getting, just bear with, bear with everyone. You've got to pull it out until you get to like a, you need a long handle like I've got here. So it's just, you just have to keep going until you pull all of that out and just keep that as straight as you can. And this handle here needs to be long enough so that when it's in your hand, you've got this lovely little sort of moundy bit at the top here and you've got, I would say you need at least an inch and a half to two inches of a handle once you've done it. Now the reason you need that is because 
when we come to finishing our bouquet, that's going to be glued into here. So that length there needs to be long enough so that that will just easily fit into there. And also for balance in your hand, it's better to have something a little bit longer than a little bit shorter. So you just keep going until it's very, very fiddly, fiddly little job. But you just keep, pull all those bits out and just keep going. And it looks like a big mess, but it, it, it won't be in due course. You now just keep going and then rounding that around and then pulling more bits out until you get that lovely round board effect on the top. And very soon that will all come together like so and you don't want any of those little, see how this, those little pearls are there you don't want any of those there either so just pull those out and just keep going until oh gosh you can see it's a bit fiddly can't you right until you get to something that's nice and round and tight like that so get your handle done and get your base done to start with so I will strike these out of the road and then we will get on part two I'll show you how to cut this and get the rosettes started and get those all wired together okay stage two is as I said cutting the mesh into lengths that we are going to then turn into these lovely little rosettes which are very easy to make. So to begin with, you need to cut this and I've already done these for you. They need to be about this long which is about an inch. I'll get rid of this. So I cut mine at about 11 inches and they are just over an inch or about an inch um, wide. Now the size that you cut them will determine how big your rosettes are going to be. For the bouquet that I want to demonstrate today, this is about the right length for what I want to achieve. And it, once it's all frilled up into the rosette, it's about two inches in diameter, which I think is just perfect. Okay, so to begin, come into here and cutting that across there. And it's quite easy to cut this stuff. You just run along the little wee, there's little wee grooves of which you can easily go into there. And then it's, I think I measured that there were about um, five. So you just come across five or just measure to that inch, which is about five of those. And then you just cut all these. Now cut all of these first into your required sizes of what you want to be, you know, for your rosettes. And I found that I needed about four, the bouquets that I made, I needed about 20, 25 of your little rosettes. So we'll get all of that laid out first. And I would suggest that you just, as I said, you just spend like quietly just over a, a couple of nights, just get these all done. And I would suggest quietly over a couple of nights because it is quite a boring process. Now the next thing that you need to cut is you need a little wee piece about probably that long, which is, oops, I've just dropped my tape measure. You need another bit which you're gonna bind around the top of your anchor, uh, top of your um, bouquet to finish it off at about four and a half inches. So that we will just put there for after. And the other thing that you need is another length. Oops, I just dropped that again. And the length that I've got here for finishing off, which we'll come to in due course anyway, is about 27 inches long by about three inches. And that is also going to be frilled up. And as I said, that'll go around your bouquet to finish it off, but that can wait for a few moments. Okay, let me just strike all of this and I will show you the next process of doing the threading up with the wire to make the little rosettes. It's a bit fiddly, but it's okay. Okay, so the next thing I've done is I've cut all of the wire into all the same length at about, I think that's about 14 or 15 inches long. And it's just a matter now of need my glasses for this job. Very, very gently, just going into the, in between the first and the second little um, raised uh, meshy bit or little dotty thing and it's just a matter of very quietly just threading together all of your little through the little mesh holes there measuring just gathering that up through there it's a very fiddly job but you know once you get into it it's and I went in between every second little wee um, raised 
what do I want to call these? I think I'll call them little wee diamantes. So it just folds as you go along, along, along to the end, like so. Where are you? Go through to there. And then bringing that wire through and bringing your ends together like so. And then just drawing that in to bring both of your little ends together and then just zipping, turning that quite firmly around. Now what you're going to be left with is two of those little, can you see those little feet there? You've got two little feet. Now about now you can either do this next process or you can leave it out, but if you've got access to one of these things here, it would make sense because what I found is if you don't have those two, and also if you've got any excess bits of wire like I have there, they need to be absolutely even together. And by using, what I like to do now is, if you've got access to one of these, is to use this drill bit, and I'm just going to open up the eye, the little eye bit here, and then shove that down into there, and then bring it back, just turn it the other way. You'll have to have a wee play with whatever drill you've got at home. Drilling, turning, putting that into there, into that wee nozzle, no, nozzly bit there, and then tying that off tight, and then holding this at this end. And just by doing this, what happens is that the drill brings all of those little ends, the two legs together to form one straight wire. Hold on, I'll just do a little bit there so that it goes right and it winds it right up into the top there and makes that really firm. Hold on, I'll just undo that now and I'll show you what I mean. So where I've missed, you can see where it was pushed too far into the drill. I've still got those two sticks there, or those two legs. Take those and then using your wire cutters, cut that off so that you've got one nice, clean bit of wire instead of the two. You'll see what I mean in due course. Okay, so from there, once you've got all of those done, lay these all out, like so. And you might need to glue that bit there to there to make that sort of like nice and round as opposed to being open. But that just depends on what the look is that you're looking for. So bring all of these bits out. And then stage two is doing the gluing. So we'll just leave it for a minute and I'll clear all this away so that I can get my jewels out and the glue gun and we can have a nice surface to work on. This is the exciting part now and the bit that I like the best, but it's like everything, when you're doing anything where you need to get your construction and your base in, there's a little bit of work involved, but once you get that all done, you're, at cl you're plain sailing. Okay, so here are all my little rosettes laid down here, and I've got all my jewels here. Now, if you're using a brooch, um, there's two ways that you could do this. You can just keep it as a brooch because you want my want to wear it in years, to, you know, another day, you can just take that through the rosette like so. Go through there. Take that through there and you can clip it off like that. And the reason I use the rosettes is because, or the rosette base is because it gives you a really strong base. Otherwise, you have to wire all these individually and it just is so such a nuisance and you never know whether it's going to be strong enough so just by gluing them on it's pinning them on like I've done there or the other thing that you can do is just go in and using your glue gun just take those and pop those directly down into the middle of or the center of your little rosette and then just leave it um, for just a few seconds or minutes to um, completely become quite firm and I used quite a bit of glue when I did mine but try and get that in the middle if you can one into there and then these here I like quite like these these were earrings that um, had been lying around for ages take that little bung bit off and then use your wire cutters to cut that the, the little um, whatever that little stalky thing is that goes into you cut that off and bring that to there, 
put the glue onto the, you can either go directly down onto your rosette or just do as I'm doing now and just stick those onto there. So I really, really love this process of getting these all stuck down. This is quite a nice wee one here too. This was a ring and I've just cut the back, the, um, the support of the ring off. So they can all just sit there and then leave those for three or four minutes until they have completely sealed and are fixed firmly. And when I come back, I'll just show you, we'll get into making the bouquet and putting it together, which is an even better way than doing all this. Okay, see you in a minute. Okay, I got slightly carried away, but here are all the jewels that I need for my friend's bouquet. So everything's all been done, and just one little tip from me before you go any further into this, just make sure, as I said uh, just before, that if there's two little legs there, that you cut those off so that you've just got one prong. So I'm just running over this now to make sure that there aren't any excess prongs that are going to get stuck when I start my construction. Now lay everything out in front of you and then you need to get yourself another piece of wire. So I've got a, a bit that's oh, about 14, 15 inches long, which I'm going to use very soon. Okay, so holding it in your hand, make sure that everything you need is in front of you so that you don't have to stop start. And it's just a matter of starting from, this is, it's a little bit fiddly because what you've got to do is you've got to stick that one wire all the way through your base. Because don't forget that this is your base that you're going to be using. And then push that through to there, take that wire or that little arm down to there and hold that in your hand. Then get another one and go around beside the one that you've already put in and make sure that when you're sticking these in they all go out the same way don't sit it stick it in so that one's going up there because you're going to have to bring that wire all the way down so just have all your wires coming out of one spot on the exit the other side so I've got one there and I've got one there one's just a little bit high I hope you can see that but that will be fine for now so holding those into your hand and then we'll put one more in. I'll put this one into here and run that through to there like so, bringing that down. And then you might just have to fiddle with it as you go to just make sure that they are all even. So when I did my rosettes, they're all three inches in diameter. So when they go around, they're all going to be, it's like having the flowers all round about the same size, all cut and wired to the same length. So we've got this, this light, nice little neat row that's all running around. And I'll get another one and I'll stick that into there. And if you've got those, as I said, if you don't cut those little legs off, now I didn't on this one and I can see already that I've got problems. So if it's not, if they're not the right, all in one um, incision, you're going to find that you have trouble inserting them in. That goes down to there like that and then just give it a wee fiddle around as you're going to make sure that everything's all neat and tidy. And even though we started off with where's my base, with a base this size, you can see that just by putting the rosettes in, you're actually extending it out. The other thing I need to tell you is you can make these as big or as small as you want to, but bear in mind that by the time you get all of those jewels onto into this bouquet or posy, it can be quite heavy. Right, getting another one, and I'll just finish off this because I need you to see what this is going to look like. And you can see that they're all coming into one stem, and as they're all coming in, this stem here is going to get is going to get um, wider and wider. Now you'll notice that I haven't done any twisting. The reason I haven't done any twisting is because every time you twist the wires as you stick them in, it just makes the stem a little bit thicker, and it does get a wee bit fiddly, fiddly as you get into this. So that's, and then make sure that these are all round about the same length. And then I'll just put one, I think I've got room for just one more. 
and to here I might even need two now it'll be the size of your rosettes that's going to determine I do need one more in though is going to determine how many of these that you need as you go around your base but it's, it's quite a simple process of just working as I said this is one of what I call a top down a uh, bottom up construction right once you get to there now if you wanted to you can make that a little bit wider just all depends on what you want to do now from there getting your piece of wire I'm just going to to stick that hold on I'll turn it around so as you can see I'm just going to stick that through all of those wires and there it is there and I'm going to bring that down into the handle and then push that tight and then using that wire there which I'm going to call the guide wire just very firmly pull ugh, that and twist that several times right up at the top here and that's going to make all of these neat and firm and it's going to ensure that they stay in one place. So from there once you've done that it's then just a, pro, a matter of bringing in your next row which and you're just going to come up perhaps about half an inch or maybe a couple of a centimetre and then it's just a matter of doing the same again and I like these bouquets when they're done so that they look like a lovely rounded ball so that goes into there now the other thing is I can't tell you how many of anything that you need so now when I get to this stage so I've got five that I'm, I've only got five of these so it's just going to be a matter of um, I'll put four around the outside like so bring that to there and then I've got one more which I'm going to bring down to this side so that there is equal distance if you're doing two colors you don't have to but this is I'm just like a bit fanatical when it comes to putting things in now you can then go down and then with all of those see we just see how I've got two there and I've got those two over there just to just gently move those out so that you've got equal distance and because you've got the wire on those you should be able to easily do that and then get your guide wire again each time you put four or five in and then just give that another pull and then I've got one more so what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put this from right from the top here and push that down through all of the wires until I get through to the other side so you can see how the picture is the posy slowly slowly just coming to fruition and then it's just a matter of um, oh look at that I've got two left oh well that's not a problem we'll just bring one into there and the other reason with using these the little wire cage to start with I liken it to when you get they set diamonds into jewellery that the underneath the like you've got the claws holding the diamond and then underneath the whatever jewel it is you've got the, the um, light that can go through it so that it makes your rings but sets the stone off so that that natural light makes it glisten so this here can just go down into here and it's just a matter of going and going and going until then using your guide wire to pull that around until you've got your extra spaces but look how you can the light running through with the base underneath there that just means that you can see all of the, the lovely sheen and luster that's being emitted from each of your stone even though they're only cheap but you know it's, it's okay okay so you just keep going until the whole thing is done and when we come back I'll show you how to do the finishing off Okay, so here's one, another one, I'm so carried away with these, that I have finished off. And if you find that you've got any little holes in there that you want to cover up, you can just get your glue gun and then just clip, just glue extra bits in to cover up any spaces or voids that you might have. Now, the other thing that you need to do is if all of your wires um, are a bit sort of like extended, just get your wire cutters and just cut those so that you've got a nice, neat handle where everything everything's about the same length this is a little bit shorter than what I wanted it's but which makes it sort of look a bit sort of like clunky but it's for a little girl it'll be fine and once it's in the handle it'll be it'll be okay but a, another half inch onto there would have made all the difference right to finish it we now need to put a nice little collar on it and it is just a matter of getting that long piece that we cut 
at the beginning of the process and then getting a piece of wire and then just going up in between the first and the second row and just working your way across and then frilling all of that up until you get to the other side and here's one that I've done so that just needs to all be gathered to make an even bigger rosette okay now from here it's just a matter of turning this over so that the shiny side is always going to be facing up taking that down to there and then pulling this in quite firmly and see what's happened now I've got this lovely little base so before that you could see I'll turn that around so that you can see it there's all the workings there so this little collar is just going to neaten up all that you do and I'll just have that a, give that a wee tighten at this stage because we don't want that coming off and you can use your drill about now if you want to to just make this nice and hard which I'm going to do and it looks like I'm being a bit rough but it's okay right one moment while I get out my drill and I'm just going to drill those like I did when we did the wee rosettes to make sure it is nice and firm and isn't going to come off where do I put that drill here it is very fiddly and just keep the pressure on until that tightens up but don't go too hard because what you might find is that that breaks that you can break the wire off and just it just keeps dragging it in or pulling the whole thing in right getting rid of that I don't like loose wires with anything that I do and it's still a little bit loose in there but that's okay because what I can do is I can just twist that around there like so to keep that all in one space and if it's still a little bit um, wobbly don't even worry about that and just take that down there because what we can do is you can actually stitch from there to there to keep it all in place okay so oh look at that nice and neat and tidy next part is to get your handles getting all of this here now with these handles I took the I used the wire cutters and I cut the spoon bit off it and then we'll just dump that and then when you get into it you'll see that there's all this black stuff here what I did was I just this is a really horrible thing to do and be very careful health and safety etc etc that you don't stab yourself but it's just when you're doing it you'll notice that all the black stuff I don't know what that is but you just keep going until all of that ugh, comes out and I'm see these bits here we want all of those out so that you're left with a nice clean entrance hole that's what we're after nice and clean so this you might need to get a bloke on to doing that job but I'm sure that I know that girls can do anything so you will be fine with that okay let's just make this all neat and tidy we don't need that so get rid of that now the next thing is whoops we need get rid of that don't need that you definitely need a towel for the next project the next process of the proceedings and getting your glue gun what you're going to do is holding this because you're going to put heaps and heaps and heaps and heaps of hot 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 glue into there and we all know that uh, moisture the heat is conducted through this through the um, the metal here and it gets quite hot that then just gets pushed right down into the bouquet like so so the handle's gone all the way into there so the handle was about that long so it's gone into there and honestly trust me when I tell you this is extremely hot about now so don't for goodness sake put your hand onto it and just keep that like so until oh yeah it's very very hot just keep that like that you'll have to hold it until it cools down a bit to just make sure that that's all lovely and fused and 
firmly wedged into your handle. Right, well that is doing what it's doing. I'll just put that there for a minute. Oh yeah, it's very, very hot. Right, the next bit is to just finish it. And um, right at the start, we cut off a little bit of fabric and that is going to be bound and glued around the top of your handle to, to just make that nice and, oh yeah, it's still very hot. So that that's all nice and neat and tidy at the top there. Now the other thing I wanted to tell you, like these posy holders here, the lady holders, are really nice to hold in your hand. And I believe that any bouquet should be like, you can think that this is really weird, but if you can hold a glass of champagne, the reason you can hold a glass of champagne nicely in your hand is because the way that it's designed and the lovely handle. Now these plastic handles, I think, are, like they're okay, that they are okay and they serve a purpose for being a good foundation, but that handle needs to have something done to it. By using the handle, these types of handles, that's, oh, that's got to a nice, a nice um, heat now. In fact, it's quite warm. This, when you hold it in your hand, should be, it's beautifully balanced. And I love that the metal, you can buy, you get these in all sorts of colors, but I love that that metal actually reflects back into the metal, the color of the metal around the finishing of your bouquet. Now, getting this here, I'll just put that onto there for a minute. I can, that just needs to go around there and it needs to, I need a little bit of glue, which I'm just going to run around the top, right up there at the top. And if the, the collar isn't on nice and firmly, the great thing is that this, this extra bit of fabric that you put around the top to finish it is going to make it nice and neat. And do be careful when you're doing this gluing around here because what actually happens is the glue does go through the little holes in the mesh. So just be mindful of that when you're doing it. But you can see now the width of that little collar that I've put around the top collar is actually um, almost like it's another good um, protection and it also just brings a little bit of that mesh down into the handle. Now from there, so the glue has gone through, it's just a matter of getting your little wee finishing, um, whatever it is that you want to use and then just where it joins it, the t when you've glued it together, it just finishes off there and you've got this really beautiful, beautiful, almost like a Tiffany Oriton bouquet which I really love. Now, it's good. the other thing that I loved about these is it's got this lovely little bit down the bottom here. And if you wanted to, you could fix these, which in whichever way you wanted to, you could fix these to go through the handle. And because these metal, it's metal, very, very inexpensive metal, you could just push your leaves through or you could use a bit of wire. I'm just gonna push that through there like so. Will it go through? Please go through. Yes, it is gonna go through. And then just opening those so that that just hangs on there. Is it gonna stay? Oh, yes, it is going to stay. Now, I don't like that little bit down there, so I'm just going to cut, let's use my wire cutters, I'm going to cut those bits off, hold on, let me just cut those bits off, they're not quite as good as they could be, so there we have a finished bouquet, so that's, this is one of the finishes that I've done, so I'll put that there, and let's just look at all the other types of bouquets that I've done. I really, really love this one here with all the multi-colours in it, this one here, when I did it, what I did was I just got the pearls and I've just looped those around so that, and it looks really beautiful because when it's on your hand, look how it sort of like droops down your hand and it gives it that illusion of being bigger. And the other thing I've done is, hold on, I'll just put that there, is with this one over here, and you can be quite rough with these once they're done. I've actually taken that to hook up into there so it comes down and goes back into it. And isn't that just a beautiful thing? And they're so easy to make. And I think that what's really lovely is being able to say to somebody, I made that myself. So when I can't, I'll just give me a moment to just strike all of this and I'll show you one of the ways that I present them to give to my brides. 
Right, when it comes to presenting these, so if you want to be making these to make as a little um, business for yourself, I've just got the colours of that I love, which is black, which goes with everything else. Then what I did was I got this here, which is a satin pillowcase, and I filled it with those little bubbly things, those little, you know, those little things that are in bean bags. I filled that, and then I've just stitched across the top of the opening of the pillowcase, so that that can line the box. And the great thing about those little, oh, love that, that those little wee sort of beady things, whatever they're called, is it's nice. It makes for a nice, cushiony, safe environment for the bouquet to go into. Here's in this bouquet, which oh look, I've got, I love this one here. The bride um, has her bridesmaids are in a lovely blush pink, so that's going to be just beautiful. That goes down into there. And the other thing that I do when I'm doing these is I always put a glue gun and a little wee glue gun. They're inexpensive. Put that down underneath with a couple of glue sticks, and it just means that if anything is going to come off, there's not going to be tears at the end just before the wedding because jewels have fallen off, they can be re-glued in. Then just cover the box up like so, and that's nice and protected in there. Asta's Place box with lid on it, and then I just tie that across there, and that's, not only is it a lovely presented design or bouquet it also is somewhere for your beautiful but the bride's beautiful bouquet to be resting in after the event that can come out for the next generation perhaps who are getting married and would like to have their own little bouquet i hope you've enjoyed that i've enjoyed sharing it with you and i tell you what it's a great little business for, for somebody out there for you out there looking for a nice little income or to make something special for your own wedding. Hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed sharing it with you and I look forward to seeing you another day.